Now, we can give the definition of total surplus and what is total surplus? Total surplus from a transaction is nothing but the summation of consumer surplus and producer surplus. Let me write consumer surplus in short as C s and producer surplus as P s. So, T s that is total surplus is nothing but summation of consumer surplus and producer surplus. Let us look at it in a diagram. what we have here is upward sloping supply curve and downward sloping demand curve and what we have here is quantity bought and sold in the market and price at which these quantities are bought and sold in the market. Can you tell me the producer surplus as well as consumer surplus and total surplus? Zero. zero. zero? Which see why you are saying 0 and that is wrong let me tell you, but this is a common misconception that if someone is gaining something then the other person must be losing. Okay? That is why you are saying 0, that is why it immediately came without thinking you said immediately 0, because in our mind we consider all the transactions as zero sum transaction, but that is not true. What is happening here just for example, let us say for a seller for the first unit of banana he can or first unit of fish it does not matter for any good. The marginal cost of coming up with that good is let us say 5 rupees and for the first unit someone somewhere in the market is willing to pay 50 rupees. So, if a transaction takes place between that seller or and the buyer what happens by the transaction they create a value of worth 45 rupees because it the cost was just 5 rupees, but benefit is 50 rupees and how it is distributed between consumer and producer it would depend on the market price. So, let us say here in this case for transaction here right here at this point when q is very near to 0 the gain is almost this much. So, the total gain I can say is this whole area this is the total surplus people are gaining from the transaction. I think it would be easier if we use the step function to understand. Okay rather than using the continuous function. So, let me draw this is the demand and there is something wrong with this graph it cannot be like this uh, it will always intersect okay. this let me say just one minute. Okay. This is the demand function and this is the supply function. For the first unit what does this say? The marginal value of the first unit is this much and how much is the marginal cost? Only this much. So, when this good is sold in the market it creates value for the society equivalent to the difference of this two height. Similarly, for the second unit 
the value created is equivalent to this difference and for the third unit this difference. Okay. So, how can we get the total surplus by adding this, this and this. Okay. So, transactions are not always zero sum, it is a positive sum because why someone is selling something in the market? Because he expects to get some benefit from the transaction and why you are buying it? You also expect to get certain benefit from that transaction. So, just when the transaction is talking taking place, it means at least you are earning either 0 or something more than 0. And other person is also earning in monetary terms either 0 or greater than 0. So, the summation can never be you know negative, it will always be 0 and most of the time great uh, it is not always be 0, it will be at least 0 or something greater than 0. So, transaction is creating value in the market okay, and that is how we calculate the total surplus. Of course, how much is the consumer surplus it would depend if market price is here then let me raise this these things. <clears throat> okay, if market price is here then only this much is consumer surplus and remaining is producer surplus. If market price is here, then you will have more of consumer surplus. But right now, when we are talking about total surplus, what we are talking about is the sum of consumer surplus and producers surplus. So, transaction never ever forget, transactions take place in the market because it makes seller as well as better buyer better off, not just one of them. Okay. Otherwise, you would not participate in the transaction. Now, let us take an example. So, let us take an example where we will calculate the total surplus. Okay. So, let us say here we have <coughs> by looking at the equation can you tell me whether it is demand function or supply function? It is inverse of demand function or demand function and then we have here 2 plus q. So, let us draw it. This is 2, this is 10. If you solve it, by now you should be able to solve it quickly. How much is the equilibrium price? 6. 6. How can we get the equilibrium price? By equating these two equation, by equating these two equation, we will get the q star and q star is equal to 6, no q star is equal to 4, q star is equal to 4 and by putting 4 in one of these two equation we will get the p star and how much is the p star? 6, fine. So, now we can calculate the total surplus, first we can calculate the consumer surplus, how much is the consumer surplus? Area of this triangle and how much is the area of triangle? Half multiplied by base multiplied by height and how much is the base? Base is starting from 0 and going till 4. So, base is 4 and how much is the height? Again 4 okay. and how much is it equal to? Total 8. So, consumer surplus is equivalent to 8 unit. How about producer surplus? So, again you can calculate half multiplied by base multiplied by height and here again you get 8. So, how much is the total surplus? 16. So, we can say just because this transaction takes place 16 units of value was generated for the society. 
ok. So, site is gained this 16 unit, this is total surplus is also in a way total gain for the society. 